never could never be long enough for me I feel like I've had long enough with you Forget the world now, we won't let them see But there's one thing left to do Now that the weight has lifted Love has surely shifted my way Marry me Today and every day Marry me If I ever get the nerve to say hello in this cafe Say you will Close enough for me to feel like I am close enough to you. You wear white and I wear out the words I love you, and you're beautiful. Now that the wait is over, we stand. The love has finally showed her my way. Just a couple of announcements while we begin. Um, pictures are allowed any time during the ceremony, but we would just ask that there be no flash for them. Also following this service, there's gonna be a receiving line immediately in the foyer. Uh, so we wanna encourage you to be a part of that. Please be seated. We wanna say welcome to you today. Uh, thank you for coming today and honoring Matt and Laura uh, with your presence. As they begin a new life together, it's good for them to know that they have your support in this. What does that mean? Is it just the right thing to say? No, I think it's a call to each of us to pray for them, uh, to be there for them. Uh, they are a part of our lives and we are a part of theirs. Marriage is something that is never done in a vacuum. It starts quite often in a setting like this with many people involved and for it to thrive, it needs the many to be supporting it. Now, some of you know Matt and Laura better and in a, deep, in a deeper way. I would say to you, you have a greater responsibility to them today to hold them accountable, to offer them your support. And you thought you were just going to be standing here looking pretty. I said the pretty part over here, guys, so you're okay. As important it is, uh, has been for Matt and Laura to invite you here, it has also been of extreme importance to them, to them that they would invite God to be here. Let's take a moment and pray together. Father, we do invite you. We know that you're ever present everywhere at any time. And, uh, but yet, we want to invite you. And that's been important to this couple, that they would know your presence. So thank you for coming. Thank you for adding your blessing to this great day. And we ask for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? A reading from Ephesians 5, to 33. Wives, submit to your own husbands as the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as, church is the head of, even as Christ is head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by, by the washing of water with the word. 
so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave their father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Ecclesiastes 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no, help, no one to help him up. Though they may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Well, here we are. It uh, has been a real honor of mine to have gotten, know, gotten to know each of you better through the process that we've come through. And thank you for trusting me for that. Uh, I have appreciated that. And in our time together, you know, I have uh, come to have great hope and expectation for you as a couple. And I just believe God's hand is upon you. Uh, you two have gotten to know each other. You, you've learned much about communication. Uh, you've taken time to talk through some of the challenges that will come. Uh, you've had some pretty good fights already. Um, and you, you have a love for God. Um, these and others uh, have positioned you well for this day. I think you're starting out in a very positive way. But marriage will call more out of each of you in these areas. You will have lots more to learn about each other and you have a lifetime together to do that. You have lots more to learn about communication. You will have many more challenges to talk through. And yes, you're going to have another fight or two along the way. And you will grow more in love with God uh, as you grow together as a couple. There is no way in these few minutes that we can ever cover the ground that will enable, to have you, will enable you to have an effective relationship. We've spent hours together already and yet have only scratched the surface. Marriage is a time of exploration, a time of learning, a time of growing that will take you the rest of your lives. Invest always in each other in those areas. Now there are a few thoughts that I would like to leave with you today and I'm not naive enough to believe that you even remember this after today, but I'm going to share for their sake. Um, you have had Ecclesiastes uh, 4 read. There's an interesting thing about that passage. As you read through it, there's this focus on two. Two are better than one. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. Two brings warmth to each other. Two can defend themselves. Then right at the end, the number three is interjected. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. I believe this is simply a reference for us to understand the need for God to be involved in our relationships. My advice to you today is to keep God central in your relationship. Now that seems a fairly natural thing to understand. It's a right thing to say in a wedding, especially around uh, a wedding like this. And your reply to me today could be, of course we will do that. Well, that's easily said today. But what seems a very natural thing to do today will be tested greatly over the months and the years ahead. Our enemy knows the strength of your relationship is found in your devotion to God. If he can get you too preoccupied with the things of life, he knows that he has a chance to eventually destroy your relationship. Note the verse said, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. It doesn't say it cannot be broken. And there's a huge responsibility on both of you to, with God's help, to continue to invest in the relationship so that the three strands never break. Um, if you neglect certain things long enough, like your relationship to God, that rope may very well break. So stay committed to God. It is the foundation upon which all other things in marriage are built. And we see that same thought outlined in, in, this, in, this, in the two scriptures that highlight the roles of the husband and wife. Uh, 